Hey guys, this is Elevator Class, also known as James Tube 439 since James Tube 439 is my primary account. Uh, a lot of you are probably thinking, where's Adam, the guy from the animated Elevator Class videos? Well, ever since VM removed the Legacy Video Maker, it's hard for me to make it on VM Studio since I'm still learning about it. Plus, the animated videos took me at least an hour to make as when I can do a video like this where I actually type a document which I'll be showing you guys in a second and then I just teach it myself it'll be a lot easier for me and it'll definitely not take as much time it won't be as much time consuming as the other as the other uh, videos were anyway so we're gonna be learning about the 321a elevator model which was a very rare elevator model and speaking of 321a Today is 321A Day. March 21st is 321A Day. So happy 321A Day to all of you if I even get this video out before before midnight. And it's actually 10, 10.38 for me right now. So I would have to really grind if I want to get this video. Anyway, we're going to start talking about the 321A. So we're, I'm going to scroll down and that's going to show us a document that I typed out. And it's, and it's called Schindler 321A Requirements and Information. So there's obviously going to be some requirements a 321A must have to be a 321A. Alright, here we go. So, like I just said, in order for a Schindler elevator to be a 321A, it must meet these requirements. The fixtures must be HT. Cannot be HT vandal resistant. Um, I'll show you guys a picture. The fixtures are the buttons and what it looks like. Uh, for the, the indicator, the buttons, uh, the key switches, cabinets, depending what type of elevator. Sometimes they have cabinets, sometimes they have keys. Anyway, let's keep going down. It must be hydraulic, so it can't be a traction elevator. It has to be hydraulic. So if it's a traction elevator, it's immediately not a 321A. You can just tell right away it's not. It can only serve two to four floors. There can't be a rear door. It can only have a single speed door, so it can't have a center closing door where the door is closed to the center. It can only be a single speed door. We'll talk about more about that in a second. I have a picture, too, of it. It must have been installed from November of 1998 to March of 2001. So it was only around for about a, two years and a few months. Two years and, I think, almost four months. Yeah, that sounds about right. Capacity must be between 2,100 to 2,500 pounds. Again, I have a picture showing where you can find that. Can be a single elevator or a bank of two, meaning the elevator could just be by itself or it could be with another elevator on the same controller or, again, by itself. Uh, if there's two elevators right next to each other but they're not on the same controller, that would technically be considered a single elevator because it's not on the same controller. And I have seen some examples of that before where... There have been two elevators right next to each other, and they're not on the same controller. I can think of one example right now, and I'll tell you. Somerset Mall, the glass elevators on the north side, they are not on the same controller. Anyway, we're getting off topic, so let's continue. It can only be up to 35 feet in regular hoistways and 41 feet with an additional pit and overhead. So those are all the requirements a 321A must have. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine requirements. I got confused for a second. I miscounted. So there's nine requirements it must have. I'm going to close this out now. It says, in order for an elevator to be a 321A, it must meet all of these requirements. If it does not, it is not a 321A. So if you are going through the list of 321A requirements and you find something that it doesn't meet, you can immediately eliminate that elevator from being a 321A because it has to meet all of them. All right, we're going to scroll down and we're going to talk about some information about the 321A model. It only has one ram and piston. The model is wholeless hydraulic. So instead of the ram going into the ground, it's actually attached to the top of the car instead of uh, being on the bottom. So it's attached to the top of the car on the side and... In this case, for a 321A, it's, it's right behind the COP, which stands for Car Operating Panel. And most wholeless hydraulic elevators, they actually have two rams and pistons on the side of the elevator. Um, in this case, for 321A, it's behind the Car Operating Panel. And you can kind of see why if you ever ride one, because the door, like when you're inside the inner door, you'll see how thick it is, 
how thick the wall is up to the COP. You'll see it in the elevator if you ever come across one. So, we'll scroll down. Now I have some pictures for you guys. So, here is a single speed elevator door. As you can see, this is actually on a ThyssenKrupp one, but it doesn't matter. It still gives you the idea of a single slide door. So, it's just one door that opens left or right. It, um, it doesn't have two doors attached to it. It just has one that slides left and right. We're talking about HT buttons and the indicator. Right here, you can see the buttons on the left, this image right here. And then this one right here, you can see the indicator with the locked cabinet. This, uh, that's what this little thing is right here. It's a locked cabinet. If we can keep scrolling down. I was talking about how the elevator has to be installed during a certain time. And that certain time had to be November of 1998 to March of 2001. If you want to figure out how that is, you're going to, when the doors are open at a floor, you're going to look up to the interlock and it's going to have a date, which you can see in the red circle right here. The date is right there. It's written in month and year form. So it's going to be, so in this case, on this elevator, it's 0799. That means July of 1999, the elevator was installed. That is between the the certain amount of time that I said once again that's November of 1998 to March of 2001 that is in between that time spot so therefore it meets the criteria for being a 321A if I continue to scroll down you'll be able to see here elevator capacity the capacity is written near the bottom of the locked cabinet in white print it is hard to see in this picture but you can see where the red circle is is uh, at and it's actually uh, circling where that print is. You can see it right in the middle. It's hard to see what it says, but if you really look closely, you can see that it says 2,100 pounds. When you're riding the elevator, you'll be able to see you'll be able to see it very easy. And it, it shouldn't be hard at all. And to see a video of the Schindler 321A that I filmed of one, you uh, you click here. Um, It'll take you to this video, and then this was posted last year, and I'll show you something. If you read the description, you'll see that I said that the Elevator Class Episode 4, which is what I'm working on right now, should have been uploaded last year, like I said. It's, uh, it, this video just shows you what a 321A would look like, and it's pretty cool, so... That's really it for the 321A requirements. Make sure you guys take the quiz. Um, make sure you get a 7 out of 10 to pass. If you do not get a 7 out of 10, you won't pass this, this topic. This topic shouldn't be too hard. It's a pretty easy topic. And plus, I can't really stop you from using your notes, so you might as well use your notes and get a nice, easy 100% on this. So with that being said, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.